of Owning a Cafe and Other Heroic Deeds by Beware the Tristero. Chapter 12. Progression. Three weeks into his business venture had seen Dabby's optimism rewarded, their time richly spent, and his suppliers, stockists, and fruit are very happy thanks to his repeat orders of ingredients and swift, efficient payments. <laughs> At this rate, he'd need a bigger cafe, wouldn't he? And although, the sal- and although salary men and women were proving to be his biggest client base, several had signed up for the adult classes on Sundays. They'd run from 17 to 800. They'd run from 1700 to 1800 and 1815 to 1915. But even though many didn't always stay to study, there were more and more children frequenting the place alongside a growing number of university students, too. This crowd, as it turned out, mainly came by in the evenings, which meant, of course, that he'd had to shift his closing time up to 2200. This, upon reflection, was easy enough to do. He just never thought that he'd need to, let alone so quickly. However, in exchange for prolonging his hours, he decided to test the waters when it came to broadening the little community he was fostering by approaching the eight or so people, his age and younger, to see if they could offer things that he couldn't. As it turned out, they'd all jumped at the chance to tutor some of the more disadvantaged kids. The middle schoolers panicking about high school entrance exams in particular. Apparently, this kind of opportunity in an accredited environment was hard to come by and similarly great for their resumes. Furthermore, the young man and woman from the lesser Musutafa University MU Tech were similarly getting to know and chat with the working adults who slumped into his booths with grateful sighs and, although tired, goodwill and open minds. Watching their interactions, he decided to set up a connections and contacts corkboard next to the herb-strewn service window where people could post what they needed help with or what help they could offer. After checking requests over, he never placed contact numbers on the board. Everyone had to go through him so he could ensure that parents were aware of students seeking support and that those adults would always meet the youth in his cafe. He set up meetings and oversee their interactions. So far, he'd had a tired manager grab his hand and thank him, and a tearful student had given him... So far, he'd had a tired manager grab his hand and thank him. Three of the economy undergraduates had accepted work experience placements in her floundering company. Their youthful vigor had been a godsend. Then there was the tearful student with his parents, who had given him thanks, with a gift basket after the postgraduate had been hired by one of his regulars. The poor guy, just a few months younger than himself, had racked up a nasty student loan debt and was running out of options. Then, as it turned out, him posting the web addresses to the sites he'd made on the large fairy light bordered corkboard with a sample of his coding had won him a job. High paying, from what he could understand through those happy tears and garbled explanations. After a relatively quick online interview with the fish-featured salaryman Mizuki-san at the Brank branch he managed... Both the employer and employee couldn't have been happier, but he'd really not known what to say when the family, overjoyed and grateful, had approached him. He hadn't exact. He hadn't actually done anything. Yet he could have refused the basket full of cat-based treats and was now quite happily sipping coffee from his pusheen mug. It was irrational to place emotional value on such things, but he couldn't help the warmth that had pulled in his chest at the gesture. A gesture that Dobby had told him was very much warranted. His employee had even demanded that he wear the Hello Kitty bobble in his bun to boot. And speaking of his cafe manager... Oi, not so old guy, you eating yet? Blinking out of his thoughts, it was a pretty standard Wednesday by all accounts and right on cue. The small posse of children who came to his establishment after school were diligently marching towards the door. Itoshi was beaming, Izuku giggling, and Katsuki wasn't yelling, huh? showed a regarded Dobby as the teen never to look at him. A look that warned him that his lodger would shove food at him if he didn't stop and take a break. <laughs> Such a good kid. A kid who still, despite the influx of customers around his age, the pretty girls, and a handful of boys from the nearby middle school hadn't given up their pursuits of him just yet. He'd yet to make any friends or actually talk to anyone besides himself, the tots, and a few regulars in passing. It was probably harder at this age, it was probably harder at this age, wasn't it? He really wouldn't know. He never bothered trying, and to his knowledge, no one had tried to gain his attention outside of what he could do for them, or assistance before test, or advice on one topic or another. The boys he'd helped to raise at the care center didn't count because they were family. 
That and for all of his outward confidence, sarcastic barbs, and defiant attitude, he knew there was a lot of hurt hiding there. Finding someone of the same age who could relate to him was going to be... I've just finished off the last of the takoyaki, so I'm good, thanks. Do you need or want anything? It's time for your break now, isn't it? <laughs> You're always giving me break show. When are you going to take one? Difficult. For regardless of the pain he could see lurking beneath that bluster, there was no hiding the boy's wonderful heart and his desire to be of use. A desire to be of use that he was carefully monitoring. He wanted Dobby to value himself for who he was, not what he could do. Over this past three over the past three weeks, he'd caught the other constantly looking for things to do, his expression a little more pensive every time. The kind of pensive which suggested that the teen thought he might be kicked out, rejected, or sent away if he didn't pull his weight. Trying to find ways to reassure him that he wasn't welcome to the room he'd been given, the strange yet comfortable living arrangement they coupled together, or the job he'd trained him up for just because another set of hands did make the cafe run smoother was similarly difficult. Hmm. But how to raise the topic? How to approach a talk that they definitely needed to have without making the younger male uncomfortable? Without chasing him away? I'll tell you what. He said the pair of them stood behind the service bar whilst their few afternoon customers happily chatted or worked or simply ate and enjoyed a meal before going home or to their afternoon shifts. Why don't we do something this Saturday? Why, won't, why don't we do something this Sunday? What? You heard me. He shrugged. And you're right. We've both been working hard. He mused. So after the kids have their self-defense lesson, why don't we go somewhere before the evening classes start? Go somewhere? The other repeated before with a dependent expression. You feeling okay? Chuckling and giving his shoulder a nudge, Shona shook his head. Not being serious. He stated his grin wry. But I get it if you're too cool to be seen going anywhere with a crazy not so old guy like me. He quipped with a little shrug. I... He blinked, clearly becoming a little flustered. Just promise me that you'll think about it, okay? He hedged. And hey, you don't want to go anywhere? Well, that's fine too. He assured. Now go on. You were just about to reach another level of that game I know you secretly like so much, even though it's stupid and ancient. He added before ushering him out of the service area. Shh, fine! The other muttered, a blush staining the few creamy patches of skin that graced his otherwise dark cheeks. But if I go in front of the broadcasts and distract them from their homework, then it's your fault, all right? Nodding his understanding, he then turned to the door as it chimed open, the elementary kids whirlwinding their way inside with greetings, smiles, and little legs scampering their way to the study area whilst they jerked out their usual food orders and thanks for his trouble. Uh, <laughs> kids... Staring dejectedly at his TV screen, his shoulders slumped and eyes tired. Shigaraki Tomura was about to sign out of the gaming platform, log off, and roll back into bed. Why should he be bothered to do anything else, though? Since he'd turned 14, he'd seen less and less of Sensei over these past two years. Tch. The only reason he knew that his guardian was still around was thanks to the money flowing into his bank account every week. Not that that mattered, really. Not that he wanted his 15th birthday acknowledged. Or sixteenth, allegedly a rite of passage, marked an L being an L besides ordering food, or an L besides ordering food on the odd occasions he was hungry and buying DLC packs for his more expensive games. He really didn't need the yen mounting up in his trust fund. He didn't really need anything within the quiet, curtain-drawn, dark-ended domain of this bedroom, regardless of the bigger apartment just beyond the closed door that he kept locked for reasons he couldn't name. Kurogiri by the Kurogiri really bothered him. It wasn't his time yet, and he didn't need to go anywhere, did he? And so long as he hit the gym at least once every day, practiced his skill sets, studied the family business, and stayed out of trouble, no one cared what he did. No one cared in general. Not that he wanted attention. Not that he wanted anyone to think about him. As scarred, ugly, and wretched as he was, he didn't need or want anyone's pity, and so, with a sigh, he used his controller to pilot his way up to the old, but damn, it was a classic. They didn't make them like this anymore. RPG when the chat box popped up on the quest screen. I'll burn you, bitch. So you're the dickhead who looted level 69's tavern? Thanks so much for hoarding the power crystals, you greedy prick. Blinking, his ivory brows reaching for his hairline, Tomara felt an 
actual tackle with his chapped lips. Death touch. You're welcome, princess. He typed back a middle finger emoji swiftly following. Strangely, instead of the torrent of abuse he was anticipating, the only other person he'd ever seen on this ancient server instead sent a laughing emoji. I'll burn you, bitch. I didn't think anyone still played this game. What are you, 50 or something? Death touch. As the little bitch was crying over having to start the new level with no ammo. He grinned. What are you, 12? I'll burn you, bitch. 12 seconds away from beating your ass and taking your loot, you bad touch bastard. Blinking, a true laugh rippling up and out of him now. The decay quirk user leaned a little closer to the screen. His interest peaked. Death touch. So, you want to hit level 70 together? Fuck the dungeon master shit up. I'll burn you, bitch. Uh, sure, the other player typed. Let's go. Placing a bowl of yakisoba next to his employee, who was animatedly playing the game, some medieval quest-style adventure that was filled with problem-solving activities and point-scoring tasks, with an actual smile on his face. It was so good to see. Shona then turned to the little steady goop. The cafe was relatively clear, as it would be until 900... The cafe was relatively clear, as it would be, until 1900 when the university students and their parents of the diligently working children came by to pick them up. And so, with a critical eye, he scanned the work they were doing. Izuku was busily copying out English sentences. Very good. Don't forget to use an apostrophe there, as this statement is saying that the ball belongs to Jenny, okay? Ochako was finishing off a history project. Your presentation is excellent. Uh, no, you're... You'll probably get extra credit for setting the dates, all right? So you was diligently revising for a test you had the next day? That's a wonderful mind map. Why not draw some images next to the bubbles to help you visualize the parts of the plant and what they do? The Crimson Eyed Hellion, however, had already finished all of his tasks. He was exceptionally bright, regardless of his snanky attitude. And, surprise, surprise, he was actually overseeing Ishiro and Denki as they struggled with their mouth work. That explanation is that explanation was superb, Katsuki. Well done. Can you two see the difference in those equations now? <laughs> it makes more sense when Kochan shows me. The raven and by jackals. I'd rather have him yell at me than Gato Sensei. I wasn't yelling at you, you pointy tooth fruit. I wasn't yelling at you, you pointy tooth jerk. You just can't do math as good as you can do Gato, that's all. Now come on, quit slacking. You can do it. Oh, your faith in me is good, so. Oh, your faith in me's got me so I can pounce! I'm gonna smash this stupid algebra and be super smart just like you, man, you'll see! The slightly shorter boy proclaimed whilst the electric court user vigorously nodded his agreement before those dark rubbed eyes slanted to him, that thoughtful head inclined towards a quietly sat Satoshi. The kid was staring at his paper dejectedly, his pen resting on the table, his shoulders tense. Hmm. So this was why the happier of the two blonde children had subtly, well, by his intent. So this was why the happier of the two blonde children had subtly called him over. Well, by his energetic standards, anyway, waving an arm at him madly when the iris air child had slipped to the bathroom and couldn't have done the tricks, though. All right. He smiled. You all right. <laughs> Shrugging, the child, who'd been looking so much happier and relaxed lately, who'd originally entered the cafe with a spring in his step, sniffed and then pushed the paper towards him. Extra credit assignment. Write a report on your parents and her guardians, career choices, and ambitions. All completed essays will admit eligible students to the Honor Roll Tokyo field trip free of charge. Ah. I don't know what the report would be about, the child whispered quietly. Maru Sensei just passed it to me as I left because, because I really want to come on the trip, but, but it's really expensive. He furthered his little shoulders, quivering. I see. He muttered gently. Shit, this was a minefield of a situation, wasn't it? The kid who couldn't very well write about his mother's occupation, the illegality besides, he knew that shinso san was desperately trying to shield her boy from the work she had to do. Similarly, bringing up the boy's dead father was sure to end badly, wasn't it? Hmm. Well, I'd be more than happy to let you write about me in the cafe. He offered his smile stretching when the child blinked at him. As a level 7 child monster, I am your guardian monster here, aren't I? 
he furthered, his eyes returning to the bottom of the page where the parent or guardian had to sign it. If the Todd agreed, then he could call his mother and verify that that was okay, couldn't he? Really? Go, of course. He chuckled. I'm sure that your teacher would accept me as a substitute. He furthered. It'll be down to you to make it sound exciting, though. Are you... Are you kidding? Blinking, he turned his face to Kotsky and... Oh! All of the other children who'd stopped what they were doing to regard him owlishly. Aizawa-san, you're like... The coolest old person any of us know! The crimson-eyed child snorted. You own your own place and kick butt! He upped his arms, folding decidedly. Not even my old lady can say that! He added with a nod. And she's like... A bajillion years old or something? Laughing despite himself, this kid! Shota shook his head as expectant eyes narrowed at him. Um. Oh! 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 I'm gonna hear all about you got this place! Oh! Oh! I'm gonna hear all about how you got this place! I was on! Me too! And me! Uh, there's no back. Uh, there's no back on that now, so. Tilting his head towards Dobby, his game concluded, and Grin sheet eating trainer, the cafe owner sighed and looked to the rest of his eatery. Most of the patrons were gone. There were only a few items to clear, and the next influx of people was an hour away. Fine, he sighed, his hands raising in surrender. Just let me tidy up the place before I bore you with the details, he added to a chorus of cheers. <laughs> How irrational.